Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm so excited for today's video because it's something that I'm super passionate about and I absolutely just love doing, and that is product photography. Um, product photography is something that I absolutely enjoy doing for free or for clients because it's just so fun and you have so much creative control over the whole scene and the set. And I think I just have a blast just doing it. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about setting the scene. And setting the scene is something super important for, uh, for product photography because it allows the product that you're showing to shine brighter and to accentuate the elements to kind of provide a story for, peep, for the audience to understand what the heck they're actually buying. And in my experience, I think there are three main things that you have to keep looking out for, and that's depth, patterns and textures, and varieties. And I'll explain all these in a second. All right, so I've set up a little scene here and we're gonna be shooting this kettle from Fellow. Um, and I'm just gonna be showing you exactly how to build the whole scene from just nothing. So over here, I have a black backdrop just set on a table with some clamps and weights just to hold it down into place. And we have our kettle just in the middle here. And first off, you'll notice probably is this really ugly wire just hanging out, ruining the whole photo. So what I did, I'm gonna go ahead and just take you guys off. So what I've essentially done is I've cut a little X in the back of this area right here. Just a little X and the wire can just shove through here all the way down. There we go. Now if you look back at our scene from this way, you won't even notice the wire is gone. And this is something really important because the smallest detail does matter in product photography and the smallest things can ruin it. And I just like to do these kinds of things because it's important to me and probably important to your client as well. Um, so now that that's tucked out of the way, not only is it tucked out of the way and out of sight, now we can actually plug it in to the bottom with an extension cable so we can actually use this as well. So the first thing that we talked about is depth. And what you wanna do is try to create some sort of dimension in the photo. Um, say for example, our first photo, we'll be taking it from kind of eye level like this. You wanna be taking the photo with a lot of depth, meaning that you have objects in the foreground and in the background to kind of accentuate the product and also have um, other elements to fill in this blank space. Now, of course, you can take beautiful negative space photography of this product and the black background and it'll look great. Um, you can use different color backgrounds and that will look great. But in this case, we're gonna be building a whole set for this product to make it look even better. So the first things you really wanna think about when doing something like this is, what exactly is this product doing? And what you wanna think about is, what else can I add to the scene that is kind of related to coffee? Um, maybe you have beans, maybe you have sugar, milk, cups, uh, filters, stuff like that. So in this case, I brought over some stuff and that we're gonna go and put it on here. So over here we've set our scene and I, you can see that I have a Chemex with a filter and some coffee beans. I have a mug, some sugar, and some extra coffee grounds, the bag of the coffee grounds. By the way, I'm not affiliated with any of these brands, uh, just an FYI. But if you ever wanna reach out, let me know. We're gonna go ahead and try to create a little bit of depth and rearrange the scene so it makes sense to the viewer. Uh, I just kinda like setting the scene as natural as uh, as possible to kind of make sense. Um, but in this case, this is how you kind of create more depth. You have items in the foreground and in the background. And you can add more items if you wish. Um, you can probably add some milk and some uh, maybe cube sugars and stuff like that. Which moves on to our next topic, which is patterns and textures. Uh, you can still see that there's quite a bit of empty space and everything here is kind of smooth and there's not many textures and, and interesting things to look at. So textures and patterns is really important because most of the time in product photography, you'll be zoomed in pretty close to the object to kind of showcase its um, certain features of the product. Uh, in this case, this is small enough for us to do that, uh, but any type of product, product photography, you generally want to see the details of it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and take some of these coffee grinds and just kind of sprinkle it everywhere around the scene to kind of give it a little bit more texture and some more interesting factors to it. There now it's looking a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun to look at. Um, by the way, these are all expired coffee beans that I got for free. Um, so I'm not really wasting that much. 
All right, went ahead and sprinkled a little bit of sugar as well, just to add a little bit more texture and more variety as well. And that brings us to our third point, which is variety. Um, variety is not something that you necessarily need all the time in product photography. Um, I've seen some absolutely incredibly beautiful photos with maybe just one or two pieces of um, construction paper with different, covering, different colored construction paper. So variety is really a personal preference and that's up to you whether you want to add that or not. But I think this looks great to me and I'm going to continue adding more items. Now that our scene's looking a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking some photos to see what looks good and what doesn't look good and what we can improve on. Um, I like using the 50 millimeter specifically for product photography because I think it's the most versatile focal length for this kind of scene. Uh, it's wide enough to capture a pretty large scene, but it's also narrow enough to focus on the subject really well. And it'll also give you that really creamy uh, bokeh background effect, uh, especially at 1.8. So as you're taking the photo or you look through the viewfinder, you'll notice that certain things might not look as good um, and you might want to adjust some things so you can make it in view and to add that dimension into your photo again. And now you can take a look at the photos that we've just taken and I think they look pretty good so far, but I think it's still missing a few items and I'm going to go ahead and grab some more items to kind of fill the scene a little bit more and add some more variety like we talked about. So now I've changed the scene a little bit because I wasn't too happy with the photos. So I actually removed the cup and the coffee grinds. Uh, I was able to scrounge up these two matching, um, I don't even know what they're called, sauce holders, I guess. And then uh, I filled one of them up with some more coffee beans and I put them on a um, charcuterie board here. And you got a lot of the wood finishes here and I thought that would match really well. Uh, and you got the whites contrasting with the black um, and sometimes honestly less is more so in this case I took away some items and I added a few more uh, smaller items to kind of uh, gently nudge towards framing the actual kettle itself and this is how those photos turned out and this is why I love product photography so much because you have entire creative control over your entire scene and you can swap out items that you don't like, you can add new items in, and you can just try to do whatever you think looks best to capture the product and highlight its um, features and stuff like that. And remember, you don't always have to take this dead on. You can also go from different angles and different sides, and the scene will always change throughout your shoot. And I think that's just so much fun and the beauty of it because at the end of the day, you're just left with all these cool, awesome photos that you can start to edit and you just have a ton of fun. You get lost in it. Thanks so much guys for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget these three things, which is depth, patterns and textures, and also variety. If you guys like the video, please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you wanna learn some super cool B-roll techniques, check out this video over here and I'll see you guys in the next one.